Hi everyone, how are you? It's uh, Brennan Miller here and uh, we have a really, really special presentation here today. We're going to be talking about everything cell PIP. Uh, I'm really excited about it because uh, we have some really special guests uh, who are joining us from Paragon, uh, Patrick and Anna. So let me bring them in here. Um, Patrick, Anna, how are you? Hey, Good, Brandon. how are you doing? Awesome, awesome. So you guys excited because we're going to be talking about everything cell PIP here today? Yes, we're really excited. Thank you for I'm having excited. us, by the way. <laughs> awesome. Thanks. Thanks for being here. This is amazing. So um, here's what we're going to do. I'm just going to do a really brief introduction. Um, so we'll start off with Patrick. Uh, Patrick's very client, uh, client focused. Um, he has a degree in social work and a social services background. Uh, but he's been working with newcomers for a number of years, basically in language testing and training. Uh, and also employment and settling into Canada for several years. Uh, he's been with Paragon for more than three years, uh, which has led him to develop a keen understanding of the test and the challenges newcomers face, okay? Just as a side note, uh, Patrick loves gaming and also uh, dancing. Uh, and it's funny because he dances a little like LL Cool J, right? And he'd give him a little bit of a run for his money on the dance floor. So I'm sorry, I had to throw that in there for you, Patrick. Thanks, Brandon. No, it's appreciated. Awesome. Yeah, guys, as you know, if you've watched any of my stuff before, I like to have a little bit of fun with it. I know it's a really serious topic and everyone's here for uh, sell pip and all the tips and tricks, and we're going to do that. But you know what? We want to have a little bit of fun in the process. So Anna, Anna. Hi, Anna. How are you? Good. How are you today? Uh, I feel like we've done that a few times. Yeah. Um, so Anna's <laughs> also with Paragon. Uh, she heads, She works on the cell pip, but more on the kale side of things. Uh, and she was a former ESL instructor for 20 years. You worked overseas as well, Anna, right? You I were, did. I worked in Ecuador. Ecuador. Fantastic. Yes. Yeah, I know we, we spoke about that. Uh, and she's worked as an ESL structure instructor for 20 years, and she's been working in various test centers. Uh, a little fun fact about Anna. Uh, she loves horror movies, and she's seen what is it? It two about ten times. Was that? Yes, uh, that's is right. that it? Awesome. That is correct. <laughs> awesome. So uh, let's dive in here. So again, uh, today's topic: we're doing cell pip language te uh, test. Uh, we're talking about everything cell pip language test, and we've got Patrick and Anna here. We're going to be going through a bit of a slide deck, and as this is live, so for everybody who's watching us on Facebook or whatever venue you're watching us on right now. Uh, you can actually put your questions in, um, so we can uh, we can certainly take those and we'll go through. This is more of a conversational uh, conversational type uh, presentation. So on that note, Patrick, take it away, bud. All right, thanks so much, Brandon. It's uh, it's a pleasure doing these this session with you, and we'll we'll definitely do more. So, yeah, welcome everybody to wherever you're tuning in from. Uh, yeah, I'm here with my colleague Anna, and we're going to talk to you guys today about. Uh, one of the English testing options if you're looking to uh, immigrate to Canada. So live, work, and study in Canada. Um, so CellPIP is the Canadian option. Uh, Paragon Testing, the company that we work work for, is a Canadian company. Uh, so we'll, we'll give you guys the, the scoop on the CellPIP test today. All right, you can switch it over. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Yeah, we're very happy to be collaborating today with uh, and, and being hosted by Maple Immigration Services. So they are uh, assisting so many uh, uh, individuals looking to settle in Canada and they have offices overseas as well. So we're uh, we're happy to be working with them to uh, spread the awareness of the cell pip test and uh, let you guys know so you guys can make the right choice for you on uh, which English test to take. <clears throat> Okay, so this is just covering basically the international uh, locations where you can take the cell pip test. So as you can see there, you are able to take the test in the Philippines, in Manila, uh, as well as Hong Kong. We have several locations in India. Actually, we have more than two. So we have about four or five test centers there. Uh, we have uh, Singapore as well, the Middle East. So you can take the test in Dubai. Uh, it's also a great place to vacation as well. Um, and uh, we have... Uh, obviously many test centers in Canada. So most of the major cities in Canada, uh, you're able to take the test as well as the uh, US. So uh, one key thing to note is we're always expanding. So we're always looking to make self available in new countries, new cities, 
um, so that it's more convenient to all of you that are looking to eventually build a life in Canada. I was going to add on to that, Patrick. It seems that yep. uh, you guys are like aggressively expanding into a lot of different locations. Is that is that uh, yes. it's correct? Because I, I know I've had an awareness of the test for a number of years, obviously for my clients and whatnot. But it seems that you're adding a lot of a lot more spaces uh, and and locations a lot. Yeah, like, quite rapidly. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're we're always looking to uh, expand and uh, just to become more available to our test takers and. Uh, our hope is that maybe one day we'll be like Tim Hortons in Canada, like on every corner of, of every street. So <laughs> that's but, right. Yeah, we're uh, we're expanding, and so just keep checking back on the uh, Salpip website for news related to new test centers opening up internationally. Awesome, awesome. Let's keep moving there. Okay, so these are the main features of the test. So first and foremost, it is a Canadian test. Uh, so sounds really nice. What that also means is that the uh, test incorporates Canadian English and accents. So what, for example, when you're doing the listening section, you're going to be listening to a Canadian accent. So the uh, audio clips in the test will be of a Canadian voice or accent. So that will be uh, perhaps more comfortable and familiar to, to many of you. Uh, and the test itself does incorporate North American English, uh, for the full test. So it will be uh, North American English, as well as Canadian uh, voices in the listening section. Okay, the second point is that the test is computer delivered. So all four components, listening, reading, writing, and speaking are done on the computer uh, at a test center. So uh, one of the good things about CELPIP is that all of your four sections are completed in one sitting within three hours. So you don't have to wait for a later speaking appointment or interview uh, later that day or the day after. So everything is done within the three hours from the time that you are seated at your computer workstation at the test center. Um, we recently uh, improved how, how quickly the results come out. So now in only four to five days after your test, you do receive the results uh, of your test online in your CELPIP account. So you'll have to log on to your CELPIP account uh, to view your results. Um, I know this uh, you know, past year has been really difficult for the whole world with the pandemic. Uh, so one of the things that we've done to make things easier with help from the government is that the government does now accept the online results. So you don't have to wait for the physical copy of your results in the mail. Uh, now you can directly download your results from your CELPIP account onto your computer and then submit the results online to the Government of Canada, which is Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada. Uh, last but not least, we do have a lot of free study materials. So we're gonna go over that a little bit later in the session, but uh, yeah, we have everything from free practice tests um, weekly free workshops that we offer, um, online study programs, preparation classes, which my colleague Anna is an expert in. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll get into more detail about that later on. But everybody that attends today the live session uh, will be receiving a free study product, but you will have to follow the instructions that we give to you during the session in order to redeem the study product. So we'll, we'll cover that a little bit later on. Awesome. It's just not tips, but there's swag too. I love it. Hey, listen, <laughs> I just had a really quick question because it's something yes. that comes up a lot uh, when we talk to people. There's yep. some people out there that might not be familiar with um, uh, computers as much. Uh, yep. And they might they might be a little bit more uncomfortable with the computer median. And, and I've had this feedback because they don't use computers. How intimidating, yep. uh, can you give a sense of how intimidating it is with the computers for people that aren't accustomed to it? Because, you know, look, a, a test is stressful on any day. Definitely. Uh, you know, like adding, adding the stress of, of having to use a computer delivery system is how do you, how does that, do you have any comments on that? Yeah, that's a great question, Brandon. So uh, basically, you, you will have to have a general command of using the computer. So being able to, you know, select different options to be able to, you know, type in email, that kind of proficiency with the computer. Um, if, if somebody wanted a good gauge of, of how the CELPIP test would feel like, uh, they should go onto the CELPIP website and take the free sample test. 
Um, it's the exact same format as the real test. So that'll give you a really good idea of like, how do the questions look? You know, what am I supposed to click on? How much typing is involved? How uh, How is the timing? How much time am I given? Am I comfortable? We would recommend you to take the free sample test, which is on cellpip.ca slash free. I just, I want to add on to that because there's two, there's two things that I tell people all the time. And the first one is, is that I tell them to go take the test all the time because I know the free tests are awesome. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing that is your first point there where you talked about uh, this being a Canadian test. And that's the number one thing that I tell people is, is if they're not very good with accents, because there's another test that you can take for um, for immigration purposes, um, and you know you can get different accents. And if you're not accustomed to that, or your ears not accustomed to that, that could actually be very problematic for you. So, especially yep. from an immigration perspective, where uh, the listening component on that other test, uh, the CLB score is actually somewhat higher in that too. Or, well, actually, sorry, the CLB score is the same, but the score that you need uh, to get that score is, is pretty high. So anyways, uh, do you want to move on? Sure. Yeah, it sounds good. Okay, awesome. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's go to the slide here. All right. All right. So yeah, just looking, these are the two types of cell pip tests that we offer. So uh, the reason why we have more than one cell pip test is because it depends on what is the purpose that you're taking the test. So if you're taking it for Canadian immigration purposes, uh, including permanent residency, uh, you know, express entry, stuff like that, then you would have to prove your English proficiency in the four sections, which are listening, reading, writing, and speaking. So the CELPIP general test is the one you would have to take for immigration to Canada. And it does cover the four components. Um, so the test itself is $280 Canadian plus tax. So within Canada, it would depend on which province you're in would determine the tax. Um, Internationally, the price does vary a little bit. So I know in the Philippines, it's about $215 Canadian plus tax, but relatively it's a couple hundred dollars. Um, so yeah, the self of general test to reiterate is for immigration purposes. Um, and then the self of general LS test at the bottom, it's called LS because it's a listening and speaking only test. Um, so that is if somebody's applying for Canadian citizenship. So when you're applying for citizenship, which means that you're already a permanent resident, uh, you would only have to prove to the government your listening and speaking uh, uh, proficiency. So for that test, we've actually designed a test where you only take those two sections. Uh, so the test is only about an hour and 10 minutes long, as opposed to three hours for the uh, four skills general test. It's also cheaper. So you're looking at $195 Canadian plus tax. So, uh, yeah, and 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 uh, I believe many of the other testing options they don't have a citizenship specific test, so that's one of the benefits of uh, of CELPIP. Yeah, I know that's actually by far one of the more popular uh, uh, venues for uh, testing for citizenship. A lot of people choose that, um, so that's awesome. So yeah, and you know what? I'm glad you covered the price because uh, that's that's a really big question that a lot of people have. So thanks for definitely. Uh, Thanks for thanks for covering that. Um, okay, do you want to move on? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Great. Let's do that. Next slide. All right. So yeah, going back to the uh, the time it takes to get your results. So in only four to five days after your test, uh, you will receive an email, and the email uh, the email won't have your scores in it, but it's going to let you know that your scores have been posted on the CELPIP website. Excuse me. So you'll have to sign into the uh, CELPIP account that you created when you register for the test. Um, and then that's where your scores will be. And as I said earlier, you will be able to download these uh, results onto your computer as a PDF and then submit that uh, PDF file uh, online for permanent residency or citizenship. So it's a little bit more convenient now. Uh, due to the pandemic, this this change occurred, and we hope that it it stays even after the pandemic, uh, which hopefully will be soon. So, you know what? I really I really hope so, and I think you know as a positive spin on the pandemic stuff, um, you know, there's going to be a lot of uh, developments that we're going to have that are going to actually make things easier, and I hope that that's definitely. One of, one yeah. Of the, 
Hey, listen, I just want to cut in here because, you know, that's what I love to do. Um, but, uh, I, you know, guys, we're live right now. And, uh, you know, you guys have a really great resource here, which is Patrick and Anna. So uh, if you have any questions, you can put them in the comment section. Uh, we definitely will be taking questions. And uh, we've got a few questions that came in previously, um, you know, when we were setting this up. So uh, we'll ask those questions at the end or during this. But if you're watching right now, by all means, please feel free to put in your questions because great opportunity to get them answered right from the source. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Take advantage of us while you have the time. And yeah, you that's right. Yes. Okay. <laughs> let's, uh, let's move on here. Just to know from the oh. slide, it is a calendar. It's not a business days. It is calendar days. So you do yes. get results right away. Yeah. Okay, cool. Awesome. So it's calendar days. Calendar days. Yeah. Cool. We used to actually go by business days. So now it's calendar days, uh, which will be less confusing. Yeah. yeah. It's funny because now most a lot of people are working on Saturday and Sunday. So I mean, what what is a business day? You know, <laughs> something's the uh, this, the presentation here is fighting with me. I'm sorry, guys. What's going on? There we go. All right, thanks, Brendan. Uh, no so yeah, this is just showing the uh, scoring chart, uh, scoring system that the CELPIP test uses, and also what the government of Canada uses there on the right, which is the CLB. Uh, scoring classification system. So, excuse me, the government of Canada, they use the CLB levels on citizenship applications, permanent residence applications. So they, uh, for those applications, the government will have you meet a CLB level in an English test. So the CELPIP levels that we use are equivalent, they're equal to the CLB levels, just to eliminate any confusion. Um, just to give an example, if you have to meet a CLB level seven for your purpose, that would mean you have to meet a CELPIP level seven. So there's no confusion. They're completely equal to each other. Um, and this chart is just highlighting that. Uh, the, the key thing to note about CELPIP is that there's no overall score. So you get a specific CELPIP or CLB level in each section, listening, reading, writing, and speaking, and you'll have to meet a minimum score level. So that means you can't get less than whatever the minimum is that you're required to meet. Uh, so there's no overall or average level. Uh, if you don't know what score you're required to uh, to attain for your application, uh, get in touch with uh, an immigration consultant such as Brandon or immigration professional, or you can contact the uh, Canadian government as well and they can give you that information. Yeah, it varies. Uh, it varies for programs. Um, but normally, if you want to get into an express entry program, you need to you need to be at about a CLB seven. Uh, and if you really want to score well, it's got to be a nine. If you're under different programs, such as a caregiver or on the trade side, then it's obviously a little bit lower and it's been adjusted. So uh, so that's that's pretty good. Um, the other thing I'd like to point out is funny enough, it just popped into my head. Somebody, uh, somebody contacted me uh, a couple of days ago and they said, oh, I've done my cell PIP test. And I got, I said, uh, and I wrote them back. I said, what were your scores? And uh, they said, oh, I got, you know, an eight, I got a seven, I got a 8.5 and I got a whatever. And I was like, yeah, no half scores on the cell PIP test, my friend. So that, might, are you sure you got a cell PIP test or is it a half test or something? But, uh, yeah, anyways, so I like it because it's nice and simple. And the, yeah. the, like if you've got a nine, you've got a nine, right? So yeah. it's nice and easy, uh, nice and easy in that respect. Awesome. You, you said it, yeah. Uh, anybody else have anything to say on that? <clears throat> Move to the next one? Yeah, sure. Here we go. All right. So, yeah, we're just going to go into a little bit of detail about each of the four sections in the test. So first and foremost, you're going to encounter the listening section. So basically, when you're seated in the test room, you're going to have your own computer headset with the microphone. Uh, so you're going to be listening to different audio clips in your headset. And as I mentioned, they are Canadian voices. So it might be one person talking. It might be a conversation amongst several people, but it will be Canadian accents so you might hear a lot of a's like because i know canadians say that a lot oh, i'm just kidding but uh yeah so you're basically how it works is you're going to be listening to a, an audio clip and then once the clip is done you're going to go to the uh, questions 
So the format of the listening section is multiple choice. So you're going to be answering multiple choice questions based on the audio clip that you've listened to. So in total, there are six different audio clips in the listening section. And uh, yeah, you're going to be choosing one out of a possible four correct answers. Uh, as you go through the listening section, the clips and the questions do get a little bit harder as you go along. So you may start with a level two listening question and near the end of the section, you might be answering a level 10 listening question. So just to keep in mind, uh, due to Selpit being computer delivered, it's always gonna have a timer in the top right corner of the screen that's gonna tell you how much time you have remaining to complete each given section. Um, another thing I was gonna mention is that the Selpit test, uh, just like the name Selpip General, it is a general English test. So what that means is that the scenarios in the test, the conversations that are going on, the topics are going to be general everyday life topics. So they should be familiar to everybody across the world, whether it's, you know, a woman getting directions from a bus driver, friends talking about what their favorite movie is. It's always going to be general everyday topics that are in the test. So it should be beneficial to, to many of you. As we go through these sections, I'm going to ask you either, uh, I'll just throw it out there for Anna or Patrick. Do you guys have any, everyone's always looking for that insider tip on the sections. Do you have any like maybe prep tips or something that people could think about when they're preparing for their listening? Did you want to? We actually do. I, do, I think we we are going to highlight that a little bit later. Oh, but you want to leave that to late to the okay. I was just going to go through this yeah. section just sort of to give you an overall uh, general idea for this one because this section in particular, you are not able to see the questions ahead of time. Note taking will be very important. So, how to note take? Do efficient note taking? Uh, writing important information that you hear to help you remember. So, those are going to be played very importantly in this particular section. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Anna. Let's move on. All right. All right. So this is just giving you an idea of how the listening section looks. So this is actual, this is actually how the test software looks uh, when you're taking the test. Excuse me. So sometimes the question that you have to answer will be played to you as an audio clip, as opposed to reading a question and then answering it. So this, in this case, it is played the question. Um, you know, oftentimes when you're doing multiple choice, maybe there's, so you've, you've listened to the clip, but maybe when you look at the answer choices, maybe there's one or two of them automatically that you, you know, no, those are probably not the right answers because they're totally different than what you were thinking the answer was. So get into the habit of like mentally eliminating the incorrect ones right off the bat that you feel are not the right answers, just so that it'll help you narrow down your search. Uh, so that's that's a tip that, that we, we have. Um, one thing to note about the CellPip reading and listening sections, which are both multiple choice format, don't leave any answers or questions blank. Answer everything, even if you don't know what answer is or you're running out of time just pick something because it'll give you a higher chance of getting a better score so that there's the insider tip you were looking for yes yes see her the longest answer right patrick <laughs> there you go <laughs> awesome okay wow. reading all right so the uh second section you'll encounter is reading so as i said reading is also a multiple choice format um but the main difference is that you're going to have access to the reading passages and the questions at the same time. So you won't have to, you know, you won't, you won't be, it won't be necessary for you to take notes because you won't have to like remember anything. Uh, you'll have access to both the reading and the questions at the same time. Um, so yeah, this is a basically the breakdown of the section. So there's four different parts, including a, a warm up practice task uh, that won't be scored, uh, just to get you acclimated to how the questions will be. Um, so yeah, if you can go to the uh, next slide there. So just as with the listening section, the reading section, the questions do get gradually harder as you go through, uh, just so you know. But this is giving you an idea of how the reading section looks. So basically, um, what we would recommend is you spend about a minute reading the full passage, 
but not trying to really not focusing on understanding every little detail. You don't have to understand every little detail when you're reading it through. Just try to get the main idea. Um, and then as you're going through the questions after that, look for keywords that relate to the question you're trying to answer. So if your question that you're trying to answer is about hockey and you see that, you know, in paragraph number two, they're talking about skating or rinks, then that's probably where the answer to your hockey question is. So try to skim and scan the reading passages for keywords um, that relate to the question you're trying to answer. So that will allow you to, to get through the question more, uh, the section more quickly and efficiently. Um, yeah. And once again, don't leave any questions blank for either listening or reading to get the highest possible score. Okay. And most importantly, I think just to add on for the reading section, what uh, we're practicing is skimming and scanning. So uh, just like what Patrick was saying is identifying key words. It could be names, it could be dates. So things to, to be aware of or just the general context. It could be a general meaning of something or the general paragraph. What does the paragraph talk about or what does the full passage talk about? So things like that will be important for the reading sections. Yes. Thank you, Anna. All right. So the uh, third section is writing. Uh, so writing for uh, for CELPIP is a bit unique. So I'm going to go through why. Uh, basically, writing has only two two parts. So you're going to spend about 20 minutes to a half an hour on each of the two questions. Uh, so you do have more time. It's not as uh, it's it's not the same pace of the listening and reading sections. Uh, so basically. One of the benefits about the CELPIP writing section is that you do have access to some common editing tools. So I don't know if many of you are familiar with, you know, typing up a document on Microsoft Word, but you can use, you know, cut, copy, paste, if you want to move things around when you're typing up a document. So you do have access to that in the CELPIP writing section. So you can, you know, cut and paste your answers in different places uh, rather than you know, uh, you know, which will make things easier. Um, you also have access to spell check in the real test. So if you do misspell a word, uh, the same as in Microsoft Word, it's going to underline it in red, the word that you've misspelled, and then you can right click on it and it will give you suggestions on possible correct spellings. So you do have spell check and those editing tools in the real test. So um, another thing to note is that you will have to keep your answers within a word count range. So it's a minimum of 150 words and a maximum of 200 words for each question. Uh, the system will tell you how many words you've typed as you're typing along. So because it is computer delivered, it's gonna tell you, for example, you've already typed uh, 75 words. So you won't have to do any counting. Just make sure that your response is within the range. You don't wanna write less than 150 words. You don't wanna write more than 200 words. So we can go to the next slide. Man, that's amazing. I didn't know you had a spell check in there. I like, I live by the F7 key in my, in everything <laughs> I do. Too. So yeah, it's too. funny. It's funny yeah. though, because I catch myself when I'm writing now that I'm not, I don't do the, the spell check as much. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. That's, it's a cool feature. Note, something to note there is that they do, check your, your spelling if it's spelled incorrectly. But please be aware, we do usually have a lot of typos when we're typing. So if you meant to put it and it says in, it won't correct it because it's not correcting your statement, it's just correcting the word. So just be careful. Either way, we always recommend to reread the information, making sure that everything is written correctly. See, and that's why, that's what you're getting here today, guys, it's the tips. That right there is gold. That's gold. Awesome. Uh, go ahead, Patrick. I'll make the screen a little bigger for you. I appreciate it, Brandon. Yeah, so this is giving you an idea of how the writing section looks when you actually have to uh, type out your answer. So basically, you're given the scenario on the left. Uh, remember, I said CELPIP is a general test. So for this example question, uh, it says you recently made reservations for dinner at a very famous and expensive restaurant in town. However, the meal and the service were, were terrible. The restaurant manager was not available to solve the problem, so you're left without a resolution. 
So this is something that could happen to everybody. Um, obviously not right now, you know, with the pandemic, but uh, where in the past you've been to a restaurant, you were not happy with the service. And now you're asked to write an email to follow up with the manager explaining um, why you were not happy with the service and what the restaurant can do better to uh, satisfy you. So in general everyday life situation, uh, you have the big white box to type your answer. And as I said, you will have access to cut, copy, paste, spell check. Um, and uh, yeah, so basically one tip I would say is, you, you know, understand the situation and understand what language you have to use. If it's asking you to write an email to a friend, then you're going to want that to sound natural. Um, obviously using proper English, but you don't want it to be too formal. But if the question is asking you to write to government, then you might want to use a little bit more formal English to make the tone appropriate. And uh, so interpret the question to decide if you're going to use formal or semi-formal or informal uh, language. And to add on as well to what Patrick is saying, the things that you have to realize, especially for this section, is that there are three things that they're asking you for. So one is to state the problem, the second one is to complain about the service, and the third is to uh, give some type of recommendation. So those three points are three paragraphs right there. So it's important to see that the three points that they're asking you, we're expecting to see three paragraphs for those sections. So this is just, you know, additional tips there, but <laughs> just so that you know. Thank you, Anna. Yeah, that's gold, very important. Gold right there. Awesome. Okay, let's move on. All right, so the uh, fourth and final section that you will encounter is speaking. And as I said, uh, you're going to be taking speaking with the other components. So you won't have to wait for a later speaking interview or appointment. Uh, how it works is that you do have the computer headset with the microphone on it. So you're going to be providing responses on different topics or images uh, into your computer microphone. And the, the microphone will record your responses. And then at a later date, uh, CELPIP speaking raters are going to listen to the recordings and then grade you on the speaking section. So it's not a live uh, interactive interview face-to-face -face with another individual. Um, so you won't have to worry about things like your, you know, your body language, your eye contact. Um, they will just be listening to the recordings of your responses. So uh, this is giving you the breakdown of the section. So there is eight different tasks for each uh, speaking task. You will be given preparation time where you can see what the topic is, what you're, you're being asked to talk about. Um, where you can formulate your thoughts or if you wanted to take any notes to refer to, uh, and then you will go into the recording time. So for each question, you are given preparation time. Uh, sometimes it will, it will ask you, you'll have to read some text and then provide a response. Sometimes you'll be responding to a picture on the screen. So we'll show you, uh, give you an idea of that in the next slide. And the speaking section is about only 15 to 20 minutes long. So the other sections are just under an hour. So the speaking section uh, is a little bit less time or much less time. So uh, yeah, uh, this is giving you an idea of the uh, when you're responding to an image on the screen. So in this section, you're asked to basically describe the picture and you're describing it pretending that the other person can't see the picture. So you have to be very descriptive um give an overview at the beginning of what the picture is about just so that the other person has an idea and then you can start going into things that you notice in the picture uh that you're comfortable talking about try to focus on things that you know uh you know what's happening because you might see some things in the picture maybe that you're not sure about so try to start with talking about the things that you know what's going on like i know that you know, the boy in the blue shirt is throwing a paper airplane. You know, there's two two young girls studying together. So focus on the uh, the things in the picture that you feel comfortable talking about. 
and use the full amount of time. Give a full response. If you're given 60 seconds to talk about it, use the full amount of time. Can I, uh, can I just jump in there? Cause, uh, it's a question I know that, uh, you know, in the times that we live in, uh, when people are doing the speaking section, do they have to wear a mask? Um, uh, because you know, it's COVID and stuff and everyone's masking up and sometimes, you know, it's muted. Uh, your, your voice gets a little muted, um, somewhat. So do you have any comments on that? Yeah, that's a great question. Really relevant to today too. Um, yes. So you do have to wear your, your mask from the time you enter the test facility until the time you leave. So, um, having said that we have thoroughly tested wearing a mask and providing speaking responses, and there's no impact on the clarity of your responses. So, uh, rest assured, it will not impact the Raiders ability to understand your responses, but you do have to keep the mask on for the entire test. Uh, including the time you enter the facility till the time you leave. So the entire time, uh, your mask has to be on uh, just to keep you and everybody around you safe. Okay, awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I know sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes even when I'm listening to people, I don't hear it as much. Maybe it's my hearing, I think, that's going, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, good oh, question. question. Yeah. Sorry? Oh, it's a great question. Thanks for asking that. Awesome. Let's move on here. All right, so now we're gonna go a little bit into the uh, preparation options that are available to you. Uh, so as I mentioned at the beginning of the session, uh, there is a lot of free content available for you to find out about the test and then to actually study for the test, uh, depending on you know which areas you, you wanna focus on the most. So we do have a lot of weekly webinars, uh, just like this one that we run, um, as well as the rest of our team. Uh, if you want, webinars that focus on a specific section of the test. So maybe the writing section or the reading section, we have a specific training webinar uh, that you can watch. So these webinars are live. You can tune in at a specific time and date, or if you didn't have the chance to catch that one, you can watch the recordings of it on our YouTube channel. So that has all the recordings of the uh, webinars that we do. Um, yeah, during the live sessions, you do have the ability to ask questions. Uh, so, you know, uh, take advantage of us right now. If you guys have any questions, we're happy to uh, answer them for you. But uh, yeah, we have a lot of webinars that we run every week. So you can check out the CELPIP website and our YouTube channel uh, to, to, uh, to learn about them. Yeah. And on that note, I'm going to plug it again. Patrick. Anna, we're here live. So if anybody has any questions, I know that there are some people watching, uh, you know, please uh, throw the questions in. You can ask whatever you want, as long as it has to do with Cellpip or Kale. Uh, <laughs> we'll be talking about that in a minute. And uh, yeah, so let's, uh, you want to move on to the next slide? Sure. Sounds awesome. good. Awesome. For some reason it doesn't want to. There you go. Cellpip live. All right, yeah, we actually run this uh, two times a week. So it's kind of like an interactive live stream that we do off of our YouTube channel. Um, yeah, it's a great, it's a fun session. We, we normally invite a special guest on that relates to, you know, newcomers settling in Canada or, you know, just building English, building your English uh, knowledge and vocabulary. So you could tune in, it's totally free. Uh, you know, it's very interactive and it's very useful information. You learn about the test and you also learn about uh, other matters that are that are of importance to our test takers. Uh, we have some more study tips uh, that are both written on the website and we also have video study tips. So lots of uh, knowledge available to you to uh, help you to prepare for the test and uh, things that, that work really well for each section. So we do have the, the videos and also the writing, uh, which give you tips on that. So uh, lots available to you. Okay, so uh, we also have practice tests that you can, uh, like that we have the free ones. So basically when you create a free CELPIP account, uh, you're gonna be given two free practice tests that are placed into the account when you create a free CELPIP account. So uh, if you wanted more practice tests, we have more that you can buy on the online store. Uh, for everybody that's tuning in to the live session uh, right now, we will be giving you instructions on how to redeem a free study product, which is normally valued at uh, 
valued at about $25 to $30. So we're going to be giving that to the people that are attending live right now. Uh, so we'll give you instructions on how you can redeem that free study product. Uh, the product is CellPip Accelerate Reading and Writing. So it's the one in the middle there uh, to give you some, some support on the reading and writing sections of the test. So uh, uh, if you wanted to know about all of the free resources we have, you could go to cellpip.ca slash free, and that gives you an overview of everything that we offer uh, free of charge. Awesome. All right. So speaking of the free study product that we're going to be gifting to you guys that are attending live today, uh, unfortunately, those that uh, watch the recording of this webinar will not be able to redeem the offer. Uh, but we do run many of these webinars every week if you wanted an opportunity to uh, to be able to to receive the, the study product. But for anybody that's attending uh, live today, uh, we would have you go to this website at the top here, which is cellpip.ca slash info dash session and you're just going to basically put in your your name and email uh click on i agree as you can see there and then uh click on check me in so you're basically checking into the event today uh very happy to have all you guys and we would love to uh provide you with this normally 25 dollars study product for free and uh, you'll also get some other things as well uh once you've checked in today so uh yeah, feel free to visit the website, cellpip.ca uh, slash info dash session, and you can check into the event and get the uh, free study product. And just okay. to add in, this is one of my favorite uh, study products there is out there because they're instructional videos, and it's step-by-step -step guide as to what you can do. There are sample responses, so and there are also little quizzes that you can take, so it's very interactive even though you're studying on your own in this case here but it's a lot of great information and they do review one full test that you can practice along with yeah hey would you say that uh the reading and writing is the area that people struggle with the most well writing in particular yes and speaking as well <laughs> so reading and listening usually is more practice based but the speaking and the writing sometimes tends to be a little bit more difficult because they don't know what to expect uh how the reader is going to respond to the responses so i mean for the right for the Sorry, for the speaking section, now that we're just sort of randomly talking about this, for the speaking section in particular, uh, one of the best uh, advice that I can give people is to record yourself. So every time you're responding, listen to your responses because there you can see if you're repeating information, if you're repeating phrases, uh, if you're using like just what I did right now, interjections like ah, uh, um, ah, uh, if there are too many pauses during your responses. So a lot of that takes a little bit of practice, but it's a great useful tool to see if you can understand what you're saying, if it flows naturally, if the information is there, if you're organized. So things to think about when responding. And it's the same for the writing section. It's always understand what the question is being asked and then responding accordingly to that question. Awesome, awesome. Do you want me to flip to the next slide there, Patrick? Sure, that'd be great, Brandon. All right, Anna, did you wanna? <laughs> Anna. Well, the tail test, which I don't want people to confuse this type of test. This is one of our other products uh, a lot of people think it's a CELPIP academic. It is an academic test. It is a Canadian test, but the name of this test is called KALE. So it's Canadian Academic English Language Proficiency Test. So this one in particular uh, is used for post-secondary. So if you're thinking about continuing your education, you would like to enter universities or colleges, then this would be an option for you. And yes, there are many other options out there, but because it is Canadian, the language is Canadian, and the structure, the way this one is set up is a little bit different than the CELPIP test. Now, Kale is more of an integrated test, which means that each section will be different skills. 
So if you have, for example, a topic and you're reading about this topic and then the next question will be a speaking about the same topic. So it's actually made to mimic what you're doing in a regular classroom setting. So if they give you homework to read an article and then you're going to have a class discussion, this is somewhat similar to what you would be doing in this test. Or if you have a reading section and you need to write a paragraph about what you read, that is what you're gonna be doing in this test. So it's made in such a way where it's more practical, more realistic to what people are doing nowadays. And of course, it's fully computerized. And we also give um, a free practice test. So if you go to kale.ca, so C-A-E-L.ca, pronunciation is like the vegetable, the spelling is not, but it is kale.ca. And once you go into there, you sign up for free. You don't need to register for a test. You just sign up and you'll receive a free test. And that way, it'll help you compare to see if this is the type of test you would like to do. And of course, one thing that we do offer that many other tests do not is you can take it directly from home. So you don't need to go to a test center to do this particular test. You can take it at home. So there's more information, you just go to kale.ca and then they'll give you the comparison of doing it in person at a test center or at home. Awesome. As a side note, I, you have to, I've done that. I did that test for a professional designation as well. So that was one of the options. So yes. for immigration yeah. consultant students, definitely they have the option of doing kale or sell it. So they're the lucky yeah. ones. <laughs> yeah. So awesome. Awesome. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. Oh, sorry about that. So, uh, uh, yeah, so basically, uh, just further talking about our response to the pandemic. So uh, this is a, an issue that uh, many, you know, all, all companies around the world have had to adjust to the pandemic. Uh, so basically, how this would relate to you as a test taker is, uh, as we mentioned, you have to keep your mask on throughout the entire test. So you are you are able to bring your own mask, a uh, disposable mask or a, like a cloth face covering. Um, but yeah, you do have to keep that on throughout the entire test. Uh, the We've also changed some of our test room policies. So there, there are less people now in a test room. Uh, so the, the maximum allowed test takers in a test room now is... Uh, 10 or under. So basically, um, I'm not sure the exact number, but it's around 10. What that means is that there's going to be more space between you and the person, uh, th the next person that's taking the test. So we'll be a little bit more uh, comfortable. There will be more space in between you and the other test takers, uh, just to ensure that we're adhering to social distancing and keeping all of you as safe as possible. Uh, we've also revamped our, our check-in procedures, so we're not handling your IDs or anything, uh, and we've, we've changed them to, to make sure that all of you are safe. And uh, yeah, we're, we're always changing how we're responding to the pandemic, um, and we're, we're sanitizing the equipment and the test rooms before and after every test, uh, just to make sure that all of you guys are extra safe. Uh, if you wanted more information on how we're responding to the pandemic, you could visit the link at the bottom. Uh, it says the COVID-19 updates link there on the uh, CELPIP website. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Let's move on to the next slide. Questions and comments. Comments. So this is really timely because I actually, uh, Gina just put something in here. So I'm going to put her question up for you how to register to take the exam that's a great question so basically what you're going to do is you're going to go to cellpip.ca and as soon as you get to the cellpip website in the top right corner it's going to say find a test date and then you're going to select your country your region and it will show you all of the available locations dates and times and basically uh, for every test sitting that you can register for, it's going to say available in green. So there's a lot of availability right now. We are trying to be as available as we can. So uh, you could search for by city, country, region, 
to find the, the nearest available test center and test team. Awesome. Um, do you mind if I ask you a few questions of, of some of the common questions we get? And also uh, in advance of this, we had some questions as well. So uh, there's only a few here, but I just, I wanted to ask, and I think some of them have been covered, but I'll just go through them anyways. So can the test be taken online? So my understanding is, is that uh, the kale test, kale like the vegetable spelled differently, right? I love that. Uh, can be, uh, but the cell pip can't, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, what recommendations do you have for test preparation? So I think we've covered a number of those. Yeah. Uh, but does uh, did you guys have any other ones that you wanted to throw in there? Oh my, there are many. But uh. <laughs> Just your top your top recommendation from the experts. I'll uh, Anna. Why don't you jump in there and then we'll we'll pick on Patrick. I think I've already mentioned most of them because I felt that those were important to talk about, like note taking or recording yourself or just being very aware of what the question is, what they're asking you. Because a lot of the times people think that they need to give a response that is more than it should be. So if the questions that they're asking you is something very simple, uh, you're talking to your mother, you're talking to your sister, then make that type of conversation or response the same. Don't pretend that you're talking to a, like a, somebody that's very formal because then it becomes a bit awkward, the type of response that you're giving. So a lot of this to note is general. So it's general everyday lifestyle situations. So it's always good to be aware of that and respond accordingly to that. Awesome. How about you, Patrick? Yeah, I would say uh, you could visit the link cellpip.ca slash free. Uh, and um, yeah, it has a host of, of, of different resources available to you. We have the, the weekly webinars. Uh, we have some of our partner institutions do have prep classes. So they're, they're now offering, you know, online prep um in-person prep classes so you could look at those as an option um but we do have a lot of free material so i would say start with that because i know that you know everybody is uh you know going through a difficult financial time right now and we we understand that these tests are expensive so take advantage of our free prep that we have and that will give you an indication on if more prep is required and um yeah and, and check out the free study product that we're, we're giving you guys today too. Well, I, I'm gonna, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I just, I was just gonna add, and more than anything, prepare yourself. At uh, least look at it, look at the questions, look at the format. It's available for free because a lot of the times there are people, they say, oh, I know English, I don't yes. care. Yep. Even for a native English speaker, I give the same recommendation. It's look at the test, look at the format, look at the type of questions they're going to ask you. It's important to review the test. So good luck. You know what? <laughs> it's so funny because that's exactly what I was just going to say. That's my number one piece of advice I get because I find the people that actually don't do so well on the test are the people that are native English speakers. And there, there's a difference between like – um, you know, understanding English and having your, your competencies in the different areas. And there's also a different, the, the difference is, is understanding what the test is and what you're being marked on. And even just some of the stuff that you covered today, if you don't study. So I tell people don't study English, study for the test. And the example that I always use is the driving test, right? Like I've been driving for what, 30 years, right? But if I hopped in and did a driving test, I don't have my hands at 10 and two. I'm not looking at the mirror every eight seconds or looking here. So you got to understand what's being asked of you in the exam. So that's, again, I'm so happy that you said that because that is my number one tip. And that's where I see people actually, they get caught out because they haven't prepared for the test because they mistake they're uh, studying for understanding of the test as, a, as opposed to studying like English. So that's awesome. Um, how far in advance should I study for the test? Now, I guess that's, you know, that's, uh, that's a loaded question because it depends on, on uh, people, but I think, did anybody want to add anything to that or? 
I, I think I would completely agree with you. I mean, it really does depend on each person and the level of English that they have. But what's important here is to give enough time to review the test. So by mm -hmm. opening an account, for example, receiving the free test, going over the test, knowing how you feel about it, that will at least give you some indication as to what you need to do uh, afterwards. So do you need to prepare more? Do you need to take classes? Or do you feel comfortable enough just to, with the, the re revision that you've already had, if that's enough, then you can take the test. But there are some people that, because their level of English is a little bit lower, they might need to practice more. So that's really hard to sort of try to approximate as to how much time they would need. You know, sorry, Patrick, did you want to say anything to that? Or do you want me to go on to the next question? Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I agree with what both of you guys are saying that it does depend on uh, your own abilities. But yeah, just make sure you're prepared and, and the, the practice tests do give you an idea of how comfortable do I feel uh, taking this test and how much preparation might be required. So yes. Awesome. I'm going to ask you one other question, and, and I think it's more of an immigration question as well because it's a bit loaded, and it's one one thing that we get a lot. And a lot of times people will ask, they'll be like, do I need to take this English test? Now, if you're going through a, pre a permanent residency program, of course, you're going to need to have some sort of English test for that. Um, however, uh, one of the things that um, – you know, people, if they're doing a temporary type application, like a study permit or something along those lines, they might be exempted from the institution for not doing the English test. However, I always ask them to reconsider that. And the reason that I do that is, is because when I'm putting together an application to a visa officer, for instance, they might have a question about your English language ability. And I know that my applications on a lot more firmer footing if I can basically say like they're like oh you know your English they were if somebody refuses an application because they say that your English isn't uh, up to speed I'm like well I don't know why you can say that because there's an independent partial uh, English test and you know the guys at cell pip or the other uh, testing body or whatever whatever's uh, required by the school says that it is that actually removes that from the visa application and I also remind them that if they're looking at permanent residency later on uh, that they would they you know maybe getting a bit of a uh, practice uh, or something along those lines. Uh, might be something to consider because you're actually getting acquainted with the test and you've actually looked at that. And that dovetails into the next question I wanted to ask. Do you see a difference between people doing the test one time, maybe because they're not familiar with it, and maybe going back another time? Do you, do you find that their scores will fluctuate a little bit? Uh, and I know that's a loaded question, but I'd love to hear your comments on that. Yeah, it, uh, I mean, you know, it's, uh, I'll say a couple things to it. So basically, many people do have to take an, an English test more than once. Uh, the questions do change every time. So, um, you know, some people will feel automatically, oh, yeah, I'm going to do better because it's my second time. Well, that may be true that you're more prepared. You know what to expect. But the questions will be different for the second test. So just keep that in mind that it's not necessarily a guarantee you'll get a higher score because you have more experience taking the test. Um, I don't know if you wanted to add any. I think that in the case where the experience will always be different because sometimes once you take the test for the first time, you might realize, oh, I need to improve my speaking ability or I need to know sort of how to prepare for that section. But many times if students do that, they'll prepare for the speaking, they'll just focus on the speaking, and then they take it for the second time. And they might do better on that speaking section, but then they forgot about everything else. So it's always good to still run through everything before taking the test, because it's not just one particular section, but it's important to know what all the sections are about and prepare accordingly to that. Now, if there are people who are not required to take the test, then it really is up to them the reasons why they're taking it. I mean, for some people, it could be for personal reasons because they just want to know sort of what their 
level of English is. I mean, you could also take the free tests and that sort of will give you some indication as well. <clears throat> but other times they'll do it for professional reasons, which, you know, if you're looking for a job and they may or may not require you to have a certain level of English, but it's always important, you know, personally, if you want to take the test, then that's a, a that's basically up to you. It's a decision that you can make on your own. <laughs> awesome. I think that's it for the questions here that I have. Uh, I'm just going to move on to the rest of the slides, and I think we're wrapping up here. So uh, there's some contact info. Um, did you guys, do you want to say anything about the contact info? No? Uh, just said, feel free to uh, ask questions, uh, questions that you have for us right now, but also if you wanted to follow up, if maybe, you know, you think of a question later on, you have our contact number there and the uh, email as well. So, And we're uh, on all social media links, so if you just yeah. put self-pip test official, you can find us. And there, we're always updating that information, so there's a lot of great tidbits, information, strategies, tips and additional things as well. So hopefully you'll enjoy it. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So let's, uh, let's wrap it up here, guys. So um, I think that's about it. I think we're, uh, I think we're done for the day. Um, listen, guys, thank you very much for, uh, thank you very much for coming out. Wow, we've been at this for an hour. Awesome. So um, again, I'm just going to put up our details there as well. Uh, if you have any questions uh, with respect to Cell Pip, by all means, please feel free to reach out to Anna and Patrick there. Um, and also, um, you know, if you have any questions about immigration, that's what we do at Maple Immigration here. So please feel free to reach out. And again, thank you very much for, uh, for to everybody for for being here. And I really appreciate all the information. Guys, don't forget to go get that uh, that those free products there that uh, that they were generous enough to provide everybody that's here live. Um, and again, uh, keep in touch with us because uh, you know we we love our friends over at Cellpip, and we'll definitely be uh, having some other things that are they're coming out later. So thanks again, guys. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Brendan. Thanks. Really appreciate thanks. it. Thanks. <laughs> and okay, thank you care. everyone for watching. Thanks to everybody. Yeah, thanks guys. We'll just uh we'll close that up and uh yeah, that's about it. So talk to you soon guys. Sounds good, Brian. Bye. Bye.